fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hi! The through stage from St. Louis was a few miles out of the little mining town of Gold Creek. Three passengers rode in the coach. Two men and a boy of 14 who had boarded the stage at the last town. One of the men, a slim, well-dressed man, turned to the boy and spoke. I say, Chappie, are you a native of this wild and woolly country, may I ask? Uh, yes, sir. Really? Yeah. What's your name? Well, my name's Dan Reed. I'm meeting friends in Gold Creek. Quite young to be traveling alone, what? Oh, <laughs> I get around all right, sir. Uh, you're a foreigner, aren't you? Oh, strange. That's the first question you colonials ask. Isn't it so, Watkins? Blimey, well, you're right, Governor. I bet you're... I bet you're English, aren't you? Well, well, what a discerning young fellow you are. Allow me to introduce myself. Charles Wordsworth Townley of London. Second son of Sir David Townley. Golly! Watkins here is a gentleman's gentleman. My valet, caretaker, and <laughs> ill advisor, as it were. Isn't it so, Watkins? I do me best, Governor. But blasted, sir, being a gentleman's gentleman in a bone-rattling vehicle such as this, sir, is wearing on me nerves. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks, Watkins. You're the only domestic in all of Bolly, England, who ever admitted having nerves. Uh, uh, tell me, Daniel, my lad, what sort of hamlet is this Gold Creek to which you're heading? Oh, Gold Creek is a nice town, sir. It's, uh... Mining town. <laughs> and just why do you stare at me like that? Oh, well, I... Uh... Zounds, lad, speak up. You're among friends. I was wondering how you keep that piece of glass in one eye like that. <laughs> the lad's observing, eh, what, Governor? <laughs> that, me boy, is known as a monocle. Generally used by the gentlemen in the social set who find some means yeah. necessary to stare down with one eye, as it were, those matronly dowagers who persist upon looking at one through a lorgnette. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's what I like about you Americans, Daniel. You can mean so many things in one word. Um, tell me, does this thriving metropolis of Gold Creek boast of a bank? Oh, yes, sir, they have a bank. Yeah. me, Governor. From those as I have happened on so far, they don't boast about it. Oh, they have a nice bank in Gold Creek, Mr. Watkins. Uh, tell me, Chappie... Uh, who is the uh, town banker in Gold Creek? Mr. Cyrus Weeks. Ah, good old boy Cyrus. 
I'm sure we'll hit it off immensely. Oh, uh, then you know Mr. Weeks, sir? Well, Daniel, in a general way, yes. In a personal way, no. <laughs> but once a banker, always a banker, I say. What? I guess so. Does dear old Cyrus have a family, as it were? A wife and all that, you know? Well, he's a widower. He has a daughter, that's all. I see. A mere child, no doubt. No, sir. Miss Weeks is about 18 and very pretty, too. Ah, the age of reason. The age of trouble, I calls it, Governor. Oh, don't be morbid, Watkins. Chivalry is indeed an asset in making a bank deal, I say. If you'll pardon my saying so, Governor. Blind me, bank deals has no place for romance, I say. Yeah. Oh, fiddlesticks, Watkins. We'll stop off in Gold Creek. I'm sure dear old Cyrus Weeks will welcome his future partner with open arms. <laughs> Arriving in Gold Creek, Dan Reed went to the livery stable where his horse Victor was waiting. After a short ride into the hills, he arrived at the camp of the Lone Ranger. Ho, oh, oh, ho, Victor, ho, oh boy, steady, boy. Hello, oh, Dan. Have a good time with your friend and welcome. Yes, sir. Oh, we miss you, Dan. It's good to have you back. I'm glad to get back, Tano. <laughs> I enjoyed the ride on the stage. There were two Englishmen on it. Two Englishmen? Yes, sir. One of them wore one of those, uh, you know, monocles. His name was Townley, Charles Townley. The other one was his valet. They sound interesting, Dan. They were. I like to hear them talk. Mr. Townley's father has a title. He comes from London. Oh. Where were they heading, Dan? Well, they got off at Gold Creek. Oh. Mr. Townley asked me a lot of questions about the bank. Then he said something about being Mr. Weeks' future partner. Oh, I see. Then Gold Creek was their destination. Well, I didn't think so at first. They didn't seem to know Mr. Weeks until I told them about him. And they talked of a bank deal and all that. <laughs> they talked so strangely, I had a hard time knowing what they meant. That's strange, Kimasabi. Not no man, him make future partner. Yes, it is, Toto. I'd like to know a little more about your English friends, Dan. Do you know where they got on the stage? Well, yes, sir, in St. Louis. The driver told them their tickets were for Silver City, but they got off at Gold Creek anyway. Silver City's at least 100 miles further on. You say they decided to get off after you told them about the bank and about Mr. Weeks? Yes, sir. I'm sure I'll be interested in knowing them better. Now, let's get ready for supper. The following morning, Banker Weeks was in his office at the bank when one of the clerks entered... Well, what is it, Lloyd? Well, it's uh, someone to see you, Mr. Weeks. Well, come on, speak up. Who is it? Well, I don't rightly know, sir. He gave me this card here. He's wearing only half an eyeglass. Uh, give me that card. Charles Wordsworth Townley, Esquire, London, England. London, England. Well, what do you know? Uh, <coughs> show the gentleman in, Lloyd. Yes, sir. Come on in. Mr. Weeks will see you. Very kind of him, I'm sure. Uh, <coughs> I'm Cyrus Weeks. Uh, I see by your card you're from England, Mr. Townley. Yes, of course. You must have heard of my father, Sir David Townley of the London City Bank. What? Sir David Townley. I, I can't say I've heard about him, but if he's with the London City Bank... Oh, I... my dear sir, my father's not just with that bank. He owns it, naturally. Well, what do you know? It... Sit down, Mr. Tyler, sit down. Thank you, sir, thank you. Hey, uh, what did you come to see me about? Mr. Weeks, I came to make a proposition to you. What kind of proposition? I have all sorts of credentials, naturally. I, I've i come out here for my um, health's sake, don't you know? You look pretty healthy to me. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, a bit of a nervous condition, don't you know? I want to settle here. I've heard from very reliable sources that you're a man of perspicuity, a solid type of businessman who makes up the backbone of this great country, a man if, who... If uh, you're fixing to run me for mayor or something, I'm not interested. Oh, oh I say. That's very clever repartee, what? What? But uh, I'll get to the point. I've been hoping you would, sir. I want to join up with you, become your partner in the bank, don't you know? Well, what do you know? I guess there's a lot of hombres, stranger, that would like to be a partner in this bag. Oh, but I say, I'm sure you don't understand. I want to buy my way in. 
You must be kind of well off to be able to do that. <laughs> I'm ready to turn over to you my stock holdings in the London City Bank in exchange for such a partnership. <laughs> that would make you an international banker, don't you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cyrus Weeks, international banker. <laughs> yeah, Nancy'd like that. Yes, sir, I... <clears throat> oh, eh. Uh... How do I know the stock would be any good? Oh, surely a keen-minded banker like you knows good bank stock when he sees it. I say, I have some of the stock right here in this valise. There you are, sir. Worth its weight in gold. Gee, this looks like the real thing, all right. <laughs> Naturally. And of course you can check by cable, don't you know? Sure, but that would take time. Uh, <clears throat> Hey, I'd sure like to own some of this stock, but, uh... Oh, excuse me, Nancy. I didn't know you were busy. Oh, come in. Come in, Nancy. Mr. Tunley, your, uh, <laughs> your lordship, may I introduce my daughter, Nancy? The title is my father's, sir, not mine. <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure, Miss Weeks. How do you do, Mr. Tunley? Are you really from England? He sure is, Nancy, straight from London. His father owns a big bank there, too. Really? How nice. I say, you have a charming way of expressing yourself. Oh, it is nice to own a bank, don't you know? <coughs> yeah, Nancy, Mr. Tanley owns a lot of stock in that big London bank. He, uh, he offered to trade it to me for a partnership in my bank. I have all sorts of credentials, really. I'm sure you have. Dad, why not invite Mr. Tanley to supper tonight? You can discuss your business further then. <laughs> sure. Glad to have you, Mr. Tanley. Oh, how jolly. Oh, I say, I'm overwhelmed by the hospitality you Americans shower upon me. We'll look for you at six then, Mr. Tanley. Yeah. And I'm sure you and Dad can get together on your bank deal. By Jove, Miss Nancy. With you on my side, I'm sure we can work out a jolly little partnership in the banking business. <laughs> A week passed, a week in which matters progressed favorably for Charles Townley. It was dusk one evening when Tonto and Dan Reed returned to the Lone Ranger's camp after a trip to a nearby town. Oh, 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 well, Tonto, did you find an answer to the message we sent last week? Ah, telegraph man at Piketon, same message come in this morning. Here, Massey. Oh, thanks, Mr. Hubby. We stopped in Gold Creek on our way home. I met Mr. Townley again, too. Oh, did you, Dan? Ah, and him like Dan. I like him, too. He's a partner in Mr. Weeks' bank. I see. Now, me here talk, Kimasabi. Yes? People say Englishman may be Mary Weeks' girl. That's right. He introduced me to her. She was with him when we met. She's awfully nice. Yes, uh, so I understand. <laughs> I met Mr. Townley's valet, too. He's funny when he talks. I don't think he likes the West too well. He says it makes him nervous the way everybody carries guns all the time. Maybe he has reason to fear men with guns, Dan. Well, him very timid fellow, Kimasabi. Him stay at hotel most time. I wonder if he's as timid as he seems. Why you say that? I sent a message to St. Louis Tonto, as you know, inquiring about those two Englishmen. Ah. Then that's the answer. That tells about them? Yes, Dan. I'm sorry to say it's not good. Uh, what message say, Kimasabi? There's a two Englishmen, one posing as a valet, fleeced a small bank in St. Louis. But there must be some mistake. Mr. Townley wouldn't steal... He would, and he did, Dan. Became a partner of that bank on the strength of some London City bank stock. They left the city supposedly on a business trip. Then they discovered the stock was gone, and that several bags containing sand had been substituted for bags of gold dust in the bank vault. I can't believe it. It's true, Dan. This message is from the sheriff. They made off with about $20,000. Then you think that, that... they're playing the same game here. As a partner, he has access to the bank at any time. Oh, golly. What are you going to do? There's only one thing to do, Dan. Stop them before they pull the same sort of game on Banker Weeks. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. After telling Dan and Tonto of the unfavorable report from St. Louis concerning Townley and Watkins, the Lone Ranger suggested an early supper. After eating, he and Tonto rode into Gold Creek. The masked man gave Tonto some instructions, and a short time later, the Indian joined the Lone Ranger at the edge of town. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. He must have it. Yes, fella. He just see man from Piketon. Fella who work in telegraph office. You mean he's here in Gold Creek tonight? Ah. Uh, he knows the contents of that message we received. Where did you see him? Well, him come from cafe, go into hotel. A few minutes ago, him come out, go around side of hotel. I see. Come on, Toto. I think I know what he's after. We'll leave the horses here and go on foot. A few minutes later, Tonto and the Lone Ranger crouched in the darkness outside one of the rear hotel windows as they watched the telegrapher searching the Englishman's room. He's after the 20,000 in gold the sheriff mentioned in the message, Toto. Ah. Him open in suitcase and find under bed. Yes. I think that's what he was hunting for. He'll be coming out this window in a minute. Get back in the shadows. He won't be expecting us. <coughs> Made it. I'll take that bag, mister. Now, who? I'll show oh, you. No, you don't. <coughs> hey, give me that bag. I've got it now. Adios. Let me get away with that. Come back, you dirty owl hoot. <laughs> Oh, Silver, oh, Silver, oh, Silver, oh, Silver, oh, Easy. Uh, what we do now, Kimasabi? We'll circle back to town, Toto. As soon as the two strangers discover their gold is gone, they'll realize someone knows about them. Ah. Uh, you think maybe them try rob bank and leave tonight? They might. They won't get away with it. I will go back now. Come on, Silver. Get off, Scout. Meantime, Townley returned to the hotel to find Watkins there and in a state of great excitement. Blimey, me, Governor. Some bloke got away with You can with do away gold. with the phony accent, Shorty. Nobody can hear us in here. Now, what's the matter? Somebody took the gold from under the bed. When I came in, the window was open and the bag was gone. Well, Albert, how did anyone know we had gold in that old bag unless they guessed that we... Careful. Don't forget your accent. Well, my good man, what can I do for you? Listen, I want to talk to you. Private. Really? Then do come in. Now, if you'll be good enough, old chap, to tell us what you came here for, we'll be most glad to listen. Sure. Suppose I told you I know who took that gold of yours a while ago. Blimey, Governor. Whatever is he talking about, eh, what? Ah, never mind the act. I happen to know your game here, and so does somebody else. And just what do you think you do know, my friend? Hey. You didn't say that with any accent. Just forget that. Now tell me why you came here. Hey, listen. Put down that gun, stranger. I came here to help you. I'm telegrapher over at Piketon. Here's a copy of a message I took. It came from St. Louis. Ah. Posing his English in a Ferrari. Ah. Who is this addressed to, mister? It was addressed to a man called Mr. Granger. An Indian sent an inquiry. Then he came back and picked up this answer. I see. That doesn't sound so good to me. No, we'll have to change our plans a bit. You mentioned our gold, mister. What about that? I, uh, I saw a masked man coming out your window earlier tonight. I tried to stop him, but he got away. Well, knowing what I'd do, I knew you wouldn't want the sheriff in on things, so I waited till you come home. Go on. What's on your mind? Well, put up the gun. If I wasn't on your side, I'd have gone to the sheriff. All right. Now, what do you want of us? I want to help you with your scheme. Sharing the gold you get from the bank. Well, we better let him in on it, Townley. If that masked man bothers us again, we may need help. Well, um... All right. We'll get the gold from the bank tonight. By morning, we can be a long way from here. Come on. (laughs) 
since Townley had access to the bank and to its vault, it was a simple matter for him and his companions to enter and remove several bags of gold, which they took back to the hotel. While Watkins and Townley prepared for their departure, Joe went to procure two more horses. Meantime, after stopping at the express office to attend to a certain matter, the Lone Ranger and Tonto went by the back way to the rear of the bank. Big <laughs> Leave the horses back here in this clump of trees where they won't be seen. Uh, and what you plan to do, King Masabi? We'll force the back window to the bank. Tommy has an office, of course. I want to look through his desk. We'll lay low inside for a while. If they come in, we'll catch them red-handed when they open the vault. A short time later, the door to the sheriff's office opened and Lewis, the bank clerk, burst in excitedly. Sheriff, somebody's in the bank. What? Are you sure, Lewis? Yes. I was just passing by and I saw someone lighting matches in Mr. Townley's office. Well, I'll get my deputies and we'll go right over there. Somebody's figuring on robbing the bank. We'll be able to trap them before they get out. You better hurry. Don't worry. We'll get them, whoever it is. Bill, Ted, uh-huh. come on, somebody's inside the bank. We hurry, we can trap them before they get out. Get up with the sheriff. I'll get the horses. Hurry up, we ain't got any time to waste. Come on. Inside the bank, the Lone Ranger had finished searching Townley's desk. You find something, Kimasapi? Yes, Tonto. This is a handbill. An old one issued in Chicago, offering a reward for the capture of two confidence men who were posing as Englishmen. Oh, and they're not real Englishmen. That's right. They have everyone thinking they are. Come on, I want to find a place to hide near the vault. Otto, the vault's not tightly closed. Mm. Hold that match here. Oh. I'm sure they've already been here. In that case, we'd better... Somebody come. Yes. Here they come, ready, boys. The sheriff and his men. What do we do? Quick, move back to the window. We'll have to make a run for it. Hurry, you go. Get through. Now. Hey, somebody going out the back window. Run him down! Run, Tuttle, run! Run! Uh-huh. Steady, big fella. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. One silver. Get him up, scout. That mare escaped, Kimasabi. Why you not wait? Tell Sheriff about other men. A lot of time would have been lost in explanations, Tato. Those men were in the mood to shoot first and talk afterward. Uh, that's right. Kimasabi. Yes? Three horsemen on trail ahead. Them riding hard. Yes. We'll soon be up to them. Perhaps it's better if we rein up. Then shoot at us. Two can play at that game. Them, them stomping. Hello. I'm sure two of those men are the crooks we're after. Townley and Watkins. One silver. Come up, scout. Hold silver. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, Joe. Oh. Uh, Master Joe told us about Watkins. Oh, I mean, you're right, Governor. He clipped Joe with a bullet. We're fortunate to run into you, so-called gentlemen from London. But you can forget that accent now, Townley. That's the hombre who stole your gold. And he must be the one who sent that telegram. Right. You might like to know there's a posse not far behind. You're coming with us. We'll circle back to town and go to Mr. Weeks' place. Perhaps his influence will keep them from hanging you. We'd better go with him. Oh, it means jail if you do. Better that than hanging. We'll go with you. Come on, all of you. I'll get going. Get it up. Get him on. Come on, Silver. Later in Banker Week's home. Oh, nation answer. That last man and the Indian got away with about thirty thousand dollars. The men are stopping outside. I'll see who they are. We've brought some friends of yours, Mr. Weeks. The masked man. And Townley. You had better have us come in. 
If you're interested in getting your gold back. Hey, come in then. Charles, did you and Watkins capture these robbers by yourself? Miss Weeks, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, no, but... Oh, tell her the truth and get it over with. Charles, you... The way you're talking. Neither he nor Watkins is an Englishman, Miss Weeks. They're both wanted in the East for robbery. No, I, I can't believe it. Well, they do gone. They come right to the home of the man they robbed. Yes, they did, Sheriff. At least they were brought here. But I'm talking about you. We saw Here, you... take a look at this. A silver bullet. Then you're the... Yes. And this telegram, together with this handbill, will tell you all about these men with a fake accent. The other one is the telegrapher from Piketon. What about the gold you stole from Townley? I took it after you stole it. At the express office right now, ready for shipment to St. Louis. You can check on that, Sheriff. Well, I'm flabbergasted, Townley. You tried to fleece me by getting me to take that fake stock, and then you... Mr. Weeks, that stock is genuine. What? You mean to tell me that... (laughs) On that Chicago handbill, it's listed among the loot that was stolen, and its value is put around $50,000. And you said, Charlie, that it wasn't any good. Well, I'll be... I had a fortune and didn't know. We leave now, Sheriff. These men are your responsibility. Uh... Adios. Sheriff, I was noticing that masked stranger. He's so handsome and manly. Perhaps you could bring him to see us sometime. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Miss Nancy, don't you go setting your cap for that one. His life is dedicated to law and order in the West. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated.